What's good, super friends? It's your deal, Pepe, representing the West Side, Sundan Park, 575. Here to tell you about our Patreon. Let's go, cruising down the I 10, podcast be bumping, TAC on the mic. The homeboys be nothing, knowledge bombs be dropping like with Stephen Hawking, and the laughs keep coming like with Jimmy Fallon. But you wanna be a homie, VIP, MVP, take the first toke. But it's only two dollars, so you don't choke. Episodes be at free, a week early, gluten free, and of course, no MSGs. Hook you up each show with the weekly shout out. Send you stickers to Flex and the Walmart checkout. Patreon.com slash technically a conversation. Cheaper than cigarettes at the gasoline station. Patreon.com slash technically a conversation. Link in the show notes. Thank you for your donation. In 1891, Octavia Hatcher fell into a deep depression after her only child died shortly after childbirth. A few months later, she went into a coma and died. Due to it being an unusually hot spring, she was quickly buried. Several people in her town also went into similar comas, but ended up making full recoveries, causing Octavia's family to wonder if she might have been buried alive. Today, we'll examine the evidence supporting the belief that she might have been buried alive, the evidence suggesting this might be an urban legend, and what might have caused the sleeping sickness that Octavia suffered from that plagued others in her town, on this episode of Technically a Conversation. you're listening to Technically a Conversation, a podcast where we share an interesting topic or story with each other and hope you find it interesting as well. I'm one half of your host, Jose, and I'm joined today by my lovely co-host, Elena. How are you doing today? Hola, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great also. Since you stole my question about the New Year's resolutions... (laughs) You have nothing else to talk to me about. Yeah, just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well, it'll be weird if I ask you the same question. So is there anything that you're hoping that you and your family will be able to accomplish this year? Yes, more traveling. I definitely want to travel a lot more as a family. Uh, where do you want to travel to? Clint, Fabens, Sokoloco? No, gracias. <laughs> That's boring. <laughs> no. Anthony? You know, we, I've been trying to make... Are, we've been trying to make our way down to Disneyland, at least. But also, El Lupillo, as you like to refer to him, uh, he's not very good with people in costumes. So I think I'm going to have to hold off on that until he's a little bit older. For sure, I want to go back to Crystal Beach and hang out with my friend, Nicole. I've been wanting to go to the Truth or Consequences. They have like a... Um, or in that area, they have like this natural springs hot tub thingy or whatever. I've been wanting to go to that too. I don't think I've ever been to that. You've never heard of it? No, I've been to like a waterfall that's in, it's maybe like two hours from here from El Paso, but I don't remember where it's at. Yeah, I would like to go. I remember you telling me about it and it sounded pretty badass. So um, I'd like to go there too, but for me, like pretty much anything that involves water, I like even Elephant Butte. I mean, I think that's nice. But traveling for sure. I think we were trying to do like Riodoso also rent a cabin. We'll see. The only thing about that waterfall was that there were a lot of leeches in the water. Oh, no, heck no. No, thank you. And um, now, you know, it it seems like every year you hear at least one or two people that have those brain eating amoebas. I kind of get a little bit paranoid about that too. Uh, Today I was scrolling through Instagram and one of those all that's interesting whatever popped up on my feed and it was like this guy full of a bunch of um it just looked like a really bad rash on his back and i was reading the description and it said that he had gone to some water hole or i don't know swimming and that some kind of bacteria or some bug like went up his his penis oh shit and it laid a bunch of eggs i don't know if there or somewhere in his body And he was hospitalized and he had like he was in so much pain and he actually lived after that whole ordeal. But it just sounded so, so terribly painful and awful. I was just like, oh, you (laughs) are. After some type of bug 
injected my penis with eggs or whatever. <laughs> yes, I know. My goodness. So no, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, the water's kind of scary. And they're saying that you hear about those amoebas more now because they like warm water. And due to the climate change, water is warmer now than it's ever been. So you have more probability of that happening now. Ugh, but that's fresh water, right? Like not salt water? I think it is fresh water, yeah. Okay, so stick to the beaches. I, I <laughs> Stick to the sharks and the jellyfish. <laughs> or chlorinated water. <laughs> or that, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this year I get new floors because this carpet has to go. So that's what I'm hoping that I get to accomplish this year. Oh, that's good. That's a good goal. Hopefully it happens because I have to go back to work. So I know it's going to make scheduling and all that shit more of a hassle now. So Well, the good thing is that it does happen in waves anyway, or at least the way when we did our flooring, like they have to tear up all the carpet and then they set the tile on one side of the house and then they wait for that to set. Then everything gets moved to the other side of the house and then they put tile on that side. So 13 years ago when I got the carpet and tile put into this house, they did all the tile in one day and then they did all the carpet the next day. I was amazed by how quickly they were able to do it. So Yeah. Well, I, I used one person. Oh. He did all the work. So <laughs> 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 I would imagine if they have a whole team, it'll be way quicker. Yeah. I'll probably be using Home Depot since that's who I used the last time. That's cool. Let me know how it goes. Will do. Enough fucking around, Elena. Ready to get started? Ready. Great. Let's get started. Do you have any crazy or irrational fears aside from bugs planting eggs in your penis? <laughs> well, luckily I don't have a penis. <laughs> uh, irrational fears. Mm, I don't know if it's irrational, but I do have a fear of heights, but I wouldn't call that irrational because it is scary to be up high. <laughs> it is. I am a little scared of that too, of, of being up high. I used to be afraid of the dark when I was little. That's not a thing anymore. I need to have complete darkness now when I sleep. Same. Um, My entire house is pretty much a cave. Yeah. I know that Antonio always says that he's walking into the cave because like our bedroom is pretty much my bedroom. <laughs> it's <laughs> always have like the dark blackout curtains shut like 24 seven. But uh, no, I, I can't say that I have any irrational or what was the other word that you used? Crazier or irrational fears. Crazy or no, I don't think so. But maybe as, like the more we talk about this, I might think of something. Okay, well, let me rephrase the question then. Did you have any fears when you were younger that you realize now as an adult are impossible? Oh, you know what? I used to have a fear of vampires that they were going to suck my neck. <laughs> <laughs> so when I would go to sleep, I would always have... I couldn't sleep without something covering my neck. It was weird. It didn't matter. I could be like scalding hot. So I would take the blankets off, but I always had to have like a portion of the cover or something covering my neck. The vampire wasn't able to remove the, the cover, I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't know why I thought <laughs> that that was going to help, but <laughs> that was my weird fear. <laughs> I guess I would have slept with like a necklace of garlic or something if I would have had that fear. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I thought that was going to protect me, but <laughs> in my mind it did. <laughs> yeah, I think vampires are, are known for not being able to remove blankets from somebody's <laughs> neck. So <laughs> I think you're okay. <laughs> blankets are known for warding off of vampires. You heard it here first. Because <laughs> I never got bit, so. <laughs> it worked. It worked. I remember when I read The Premature Burial by Edgar Allan Poe as a kid. I was terrified that that would happen to me. I had the irrational fear that I would go into such a deep sleep that my parents would think I was dead and bury me alive, only to wake up in the coffin after I had been buried. As I read about this subject, I discovered that it has happened before, and there were actually several contraptions that were built to alert those above ground that you were still alive. The following is from a Roadside America article, no author given, American Hauntings article, no author given, and an Appalachian History article by Jessica Forsyth. Link in the show notes. In early 1891, Octavia Hatcher, a 20-year-old woman from Pikeville, Kentucky, gave birth to her only child, Jacob. 
Jacob died shortly after childbirth, causing Octavia to sink into a long and deep depression and eventually went into a coma. She was pronounced dead on May 2, 1891, and her husband James had her quickly buried due to the hot spell they were experiencing in Pikeville at the time. Octavia's case of going into a coma and quickly dying wasn't unique to her. Other people in Pikeville were also falling into deep comas, appearing to die, but would later make a full recovery. The thought then crossed the family's mind. Could it be possible that Octavia was buried alive? The family quickly dug up her grave and made a gruesome discovery. Octavia's nails were all bloody, the lining of the coffin was shredded, and her face was horribly contorted. She had been buried alive, but what could have caused her to be mistaken as dead? And was she truly buried alive, or is this an urban legend? Before we examine this further, are you familiar with the story of Octavia Hatcher? I am familiar with the story of, I don't know if it was her, but I have heard of people being buried alive. You know what? I think you used to have this book when I was little, like I read it and I remember reading a story about somebody being buried alive and how they would put like a little bell um, at the gravestone. So if you were buried alive, you would like ring it. And so that was also one of my irrational fears <laughs> when I was little. <laughs> so vampires biting uh, my neck through the blankets I, I, and um, being buried alive. <laughs> no, I, I do remember that book. I don't remember what it was called, though, but I do remember it having people with little bells and stuff so that they can ring it if they wake up in the, in the grave or whatever. Oh that's, oh, that's so scary. Because, I mean, it's true. It has happened. Yeah. I don't think it can still happen, but there have been cases where people are pronounced dead, legally dead, and they still come back. So you never know. I think now they wait until you're actually brain dead. Because even if they can bring you back, you're going to be a vegetable. So Yeah. Well, I think in other countries, though, where they don't have the technology that we have here, I, I think things like that still happen. It's possible. Yeah. And I actually had to practice a bit saying Octavia, because my natural reaction was to call her Octavia. But then I realized that she's probably not Mexican. And I had to look up to see how American people were saying her name. <laughs> Octavia just sounds weird. Like she's a fucking Spider-Man villain or something. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of Oc Dr. Octavius Damien. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doc Oc. <laughs> Doc Oc. <laughs> Would you like to take a guess as to whether she was actually buried alive? I want to say that she was. All right, so let's go ahead and examine all the details and see if you're right. Spoiler alert, the answer is unfucking clear <laughs> We'll go through all the information, most of it anecdotal, and then we'll see what you think afterwards. Mm -hmm. According to Everett Johnson, who is the curator of the Big Sandy Heritage Museum in Pikeville, there aren't any news accounts of what happened. For 1891, this would have been huge news, especially since Octavia was a daughter of one of Pikeville's most elite families and her husband James Hatcher made his fortune in timber and coal and owned thousands of acres of Pike County land. This leads many critics to claim that lack of news about the incident is evidence that it didn't happen. Johnson, however, is quick to point out that since her family was so affluent and owned so much of the land, reporting on Octavia's horrifying fate would have been seen as a bad business decision for the local newspaper, doctor, or undertaker, since Octavia's family would have controlled a lot of the town. James Hatcher alone handled nearly all the merchandise that came by boat into the city. He also built the town's courthouse, was one of the town's largest landowners, was a prominent figure in the Democratic political party, and served one term as a clerk for the Pike County Court. This was in addition to his timber and coal business that made him rich. So I can see why some would be hesitant to report on something as scandalous as Octavia being buried alive. According to Johnson, Octavia's relatives do claim that the story is a bunch of foolishness and nothing like that ever happened. So what do you think? Octavia's relatives denying the story doesn't look too good for the legend, right? Right. But who would have come up with the story to begin with and why? That's an excellent question. A year after Octavia died, James had a life-size marble statue of his wife built over his wife's hilltop grave. He later built the downtown Pike Hotel in a spot where her statue gaze would always be be able to watch over the hotel and him. Kind of creepy, but nothing too crazy, right? It almost borders on being both creepy and sweet. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I was like, why would he want to have her gaze on the hotel? That is really weird. All right, this is where it gets a little bit creepy. Okay. 
Later, James built the James Hatcher Hotel, which included a small museum with local artifacts in the lobby. Among the artifacts was the photo that James used to model Octavia's statue, as well as James' own custom-built coffin designed to prevent him from being buried alive. Hmm. Pretty strange thing to build, right? Especially since Octavia's family denied that she was buried alive, wouldn't you say? Right. Yes, I would say. Maybe he had a fever dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he imagined it all, and then, then he just got that irrational fear of being buried alive. And then that's why he came up with that coffin. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know either. This immediately made me think, one, if Octavia hadn't been buried alive, why would he design his own custom coffin to prevent him from being buried alive? I don't think that it was a coincidence. At the same time, I'm pretty sure he probably had heard the rumors that his wife had been buried alive. So even if it wasn't true, I'm sure that would have been enough to fuck with them. Right. Bodies back then weren't embalmed the way that they are now, where they fill you with so many chemicals and preservatives that if you weren't dead before, you would be after the embalming. Yeah. Back then, they wanted to bury you quickly before you started to stink and spread disease. The second thought that ran through my head was, who the hell wants to stay at a hotel where there's a custom coffin on display in the lobby? I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I would definitely want to visit the hotel, but I don't know if I would want to spend the night there. You? I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with it. I, I mean, it's people have a morbid curiosity, and I think there's tons of people out there that would have stayed at that hotel. I mean, how many people have stayed at the... Um, the Soto Hotel. That is true. Especially after everything that happened. People are sick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to stay at the DeSoto Hotel, but I would want to visit it. Yeah, I would definitely want to visit it too. But uh, And I think I have visited it like on one of the ghost tours that I did. Oh, wow. But that wouldn't be somewhere that I would want to spend the night. No. Or what's that one um, with Lisa Lam? Lisa Lam? Oh, that's the... Um, we did an episode about it. Um, yeah. So where Richard Ramirez, Ricky Ramirez del Paso stayed at during his murder spree. Yeah, Dakota was on that episode. He did that episode with me uh, from Contra Zoom Pod. I just know they renamed it to like Stay on Main or something like that. Yes. Yeah, they did. Uh, it was, oh, the Cecil, Cecil Hotel. The Cecil Hotel. Yeah. Also one that I would not want to stay at, but I would definitely want to go visit it. Yeah. So James outlived Octavia by 50 years and never remarried. The story goes that when James died, he was buried at Octavia's feet and was buried with a string around his finger. If we woke up in the coffin, he would pull on the string, which would ring a bell above the ground, alerting people that he was still alive. Now, I didn't find information confirming if this was James's custom coffin design or if he had another one built. I had actually read when I was younger that the bell over the grave was not too uncommon back in the day because science wasn't great back then and doctors were known to make mistakes, which is a horrifying thought. And you alluded to that book that I had that, that talked about that. <laughs> yes. I was reading uh, material that I, that I probably should not have been reading at the age of five. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have been reading it either, but I've always been fascinated with horrifying and grim and morbid shit. <laughs> yeah, me too. So let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break. And when we return, we'll talk about Octavia's haunted statue that spins on the anniversary of her death and what might have been wrong with Octavia if she really did come back to life while in the grave. Hi, this is Dakota, host of ContraZoom Pod, where we go back and forth about film. I am obsessed with movies. I could talk about them all day. And if you're like me, then you'll love my podcast. Every week we take a new topic, whether it's ranking a director's filmography, covering major film festivals, or getting way into Oscar season. While every week is different, we do have some recurring topics, like our Make Remake series looking at an original film and its remake, or our very popular A History Of program, taking an in-depth look, looking at some of the biggest companies involved in film, including Criterion, A24, and Neon. It isn't all super serious topics, though, as we always need to play catch-up with all the hottest Marvel Cinematic Universe news and general pop culture goings-on. There's something for every kind of movie lover, whether you want reviews, interviews, or in-depth conversations. ContraZoom Pod is found on all podcatcher apps, and visit ContraZoomPod.com for even more information. Hey. 
If you like all things spooky, then check out A Spooky Tales, hosted by us, Christina. And MJ, where we talk about all things spooky, paranormal stories, haunted places, myths, and legends. Listen to guests tell us their scary stories. And I hear them call me by, by my name. So I run into the kitchen to check, and there's nobody there. And I start to, like, hear... Like my closet door start to open. Oh hell no! Like, oh, my God. Inside. oh hell no! All of a sudden, for no reason, I woke up in the middle of the night. Like my eyes just snapped open, and it's that strange feeling that you have when something wakes you up. You and you don't know what has woken you up until you either see what it was or you hear whatever it was. There are new episodes every Friday. Listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts, as well as at SpookyTales.com. And we're back. We're back. Did you bury anyone alive during our break, Elena? No, but I think I was buried alive. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I have questions. <laughs> How? Why? What? When? <laughs> what are your thoughts so far? I don't know if her story is true, but I do believe that people were buried alive. Like you said, science was not the greatest back then, and doctors were, were known to make mistakes. Indeed they were. Like I mentioned before the break, the weirdness surrounding Octavia didn't end with James's death. Octavia's grave was said to be haunted. Of course. Every year on the anniversary of Octavia's death, the statue that James had built to honor her would be turned around. She had initially been facing the Pike Hotel, but now she was facing away from the city. People claimed it was Octavia's ghost and the statue was rotating, facing away from Pikeville like she was turning her back on the city for allowing her to be buried alive. Aye, aye. The Hatcher family, as you would expect, got fed up with the shenanigans and erected a tall fence around the grave. Miraculously, that was the last time the statue spun around on its own. Not even Octavia's ghost could pass through the fence to rotate the statue. That doesn't make sense, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Just like my blanket. Yeah. My blanket stopped the vampires. The the fence is stopping the ghost. Exactly. <laughs> Polly Hopkins, the director of the Big Sandy Heritage Museum, told Roadside America that her father knew someone from his college class who had broken off Octavia's right hand one of the times the statue was rotated. So if you were to see Octavia's statue, she is missing her right hand. If Hopkins is to be believed, it sounds like the statue was rotated due to dumb college kid pranks rather than the supernatural. That's not the only statue that was damaged or vandalized. There is a little statue for baby Jacob, who died shortly after birth. His statue is missing half his head, which I think is super sad and kind of fucked up. That is fucked up, motherfuckers. <laughs> People who have visited the cemetery also claim that they can hear a kitten crying from the area where Octavia is buried. But as people approach the plot to investigate, the sound stops. Others claim it's not a kitten crying, it's the crying of a woman. So what might have caused Octavia and other people in her town to appear dead, but then miraculously rise from the dead? Want to take a guess after you're done texting? No, I'm looking at the statue. Oh. I wanted to see it. It is missing a hand. I'm like, it is missing a hand. It's kind of crazy. I just told you that. No, I know, but I wanted to see it. I wanted to see if that fence was still there. <laughs> that kept the ghost. <laughs> in some pictures, you can't see it. Yeah, but it's just like a like a chain link fence or something. I mean, from what I see, it's not like this tall ass wall or something that's going to keep a ghost out. No, but it's enough to keep some drunk college students away, though. <laughs> that, yes, that indeed. <laughs> okay, now I forgot what your question was. Do I want to take a guess of what? Of what might have caused Octavia and the other people in the town to appear dead, but then miraculously rise from the dead like Lazarus. Mm, there was probably some kind of sedative. Maybe it was the fucking Tylenol laced with <laughs> <laughs> with cyanide. 
Yeah, cyanide, but very, very little trace amounts of cyanide. That's just enough to make you look and feel dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was probably something in the air. No, but I mean, how many people are we talking about? Do we have a number? No, I didn't give any amounts. All the sources I used didn't list what any of their sources was. And I'm actually going to criticize that towards the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, there really weren't very many sources. It must have been something in the water that they were drinking, some kind of uh, pesticide they were using, something like that. That was just maybe uh, some people were just more susceptible to it than others. Well, there were two theories. The first one was encephalitis, which is a mosquito-borne illness that causes inflammation of the brain and spinal cord. Mm. And according to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, individuals with encephalitis often have mild flu-like symptoms, but in severe cases, people might experience problems with speech or hearing, hallucinations, personality changes, muscle weakness, impaired judgment, seizures, memory loss, and of particular importance for this case, partial paralysis in the arms and legs, and loss of consciousness. Extreme cases can lead to stroke, brain damage, or death. And the NIH also does list that mosquito and tick bites are two of a multitude of ways that encephalitis can be transmitted. That makes sense. Yeah. And one more reason for me to fear the mosquito. I know. I hate mosquitoes so much. I know. Jessica Forsyth from the Big Sandy Heritage Center wrote in an Appalachian History article that it could have also been a bite from the Setsi fly, as many people were suffering from a similar sleeping sickness like Octavia, but would awaken after a time. Since that spring was unusually hot and embalming was not yet common, no time was wasted in burying Octavia. It wasn't until several days later that others started displaying similar symptoms to Octavia that James allegedly was able to secure an emergency exhumation and uncovered the horrific truth that his wife had been buried alive. According to American Hauntings, Octavia's coffin was not airtight and apparently she lived several days trapped beneath the ground. The other theory for what, what might have caused Octavia to pass out was gas escaping from a coal mine. According to the NIH, people can asphyxiate or lose consciousness after inhaling methane gas from coal mines. So again, very possible. That's horrible. It is. What do you think? Do you like any of these theories? I mean, they all sound possible. Could have been a fly, could have been a mosquito, could have been the mines. Who knows? But um, it is a little weird how obsessed this man became with his wife. Maybe he thought he owed her something because maybe she was really buried alive. Like he was really like guilt ridden. You know what I mean? So that's why he had the statue and all that other stuff done. Or, or I don't know, to memorialize her. Well, I, I think the only thing that he did really was just to erect that statue. But I mean, he was a person that had a lot of money. And I think that if more people had as much money as he did, they would erect statues for their loved ones also, you know, their parents or siblings that might have passed away. I just think that he had the means to do it and he did it. But um, aside from building his own custom coffin, I don't think that he had like an unhealthy obsession with his wife. I don't know. It sounds a little unhealthy to me. <laughs> Especially since he wanted it to be like watching the hotel where he was, I'm assuming, working or maybe staying at occasionally. Yeah, that part is creepy. I forgot about that. But it's almost kind of sweet, though. Mm. <laughs> <I'm> a, mm. <laughs> I guess. Originally, I liked the methane theory. I thought that since James made his fortune from coal, it was possible that they lived near a coal mine. And maybe that might have killed baby Jacob, too. I couldn't find any information on what his cause of death was, only that Jacob died in January of 1891. The more I learned about the encephalitis and how other people in the area were experiencing similar symptoms, the more I started liking that theory, though. Yeah, that's probably the most likely. WYMT, which is a CBS affiliate, tried doing their own research, and they stated that they were unable to uncover any obituaries for Octavia or Jacob. The strange thing is that it's not like they were omitted or something. The newspapers for that period of time were just not available. It's pretty strange, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, this lady obviously exists. There's a statue. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, there is no doubt that she existed. That's kind of strange that any 
newspapers from that time period don't exist. There's like a big void. That is really weird. But I mean, this family obviously has a lot of money. So if they didn't like what they were saying about Octavia, so I mean, it could be possible that they just purchased them all and got rid of them or paid somebody off so that they would just not be in existence. I kind of think that too. So now that you heard all the evidence or lack of evidence, what do you think? Was she buried alive? Did your answer change at all from the beginning of the episode? Um, well, I would like to think, no, just kidding. I, I don't want to like <laughs> to think that, but. <laughs> it would make me very happy to think that she. <laughs> yeah, that they did open up her grave and her face was disfigured and her nails were, no, just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. The lack of evidence and all that stuff sucks. I wish there would be more more out there. Um, but just because her story didn't happen doesn't mean it just it didn't happen at all, you know? Yeah. Originally, when I came across this story, I thought it was just an urban legend. But James building his own custom coffin with a bell and string and all that shit makes me think that maybe there might be some truth to that. Mm -hmm. Especially if a lot of people were suffering from encephalitis at the time and were experiencing similar symptoms to Octavia. Anyone that would have known for sure has long since died. Yeah. James Hatcher died in 1939 at the age of 80. Do we know if he was actually buried in that coffin, though? The only thing that I could find is that he was buried in a custom coffin. I couldn't find information if he was buried in that coffin that he designed. Yeah. There not being any obituaries or newspapers available from the time also make me kind of suspicious. If Octavia's family were really the big ballers these articles claim to be, they would have the clout to make all those newspapers disappear, like you had said. And that was the problem also with the sources that I used. They all seemed to recite the same information, some with more details than others, but they never cited any sources. Jamie Rubio from Dreaming Casually also criticized all the retellings of the story for lack of sources. The sources all these websites have seem to be people who work for the Big Sandy Heritage Museum or Big Sandy Heritage Center retelling the stories. But without there being any newspapers carrying her death or even an obituary, it's hard to say how much, if any, of these stories is true. So I guess that will leave that to our super friends to write in with their thoughts, and we'll read them on a future episode of the show if we get any responses. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't remember what story I was writing about or what I was reading about, but it was something to do with, oh, I think it was like the nursery rhyme thing that... Um, because of the lack of sources and not being able to verify all that stuff, basically it boiled down to being an urban legend. It's just like somebody retelling that story over and over again. Yeah. And that really was a problem that I had with this. I would try and check other sources. And first of all, none of these were like what I would consider a reputable first party source. They were all like sites like Roadside America, Appalachian History, American Haunting, <laughs> Dreaming casually, poetry. Uh, so, yeah, so they were all like really weird sites. It wasn't like anything from like Britannica or New York Times, you know, any newspapers, nothing, you know, because really nothing exists. <sighs> yeah, that's so weird. Especially like you would think there would be an obituary for somebody so important, especially if they had the money to be able to erect a statue like that to honor this person. You would think there'd be any record, any kind of record out there. So that, that is a little strange. And I'm sure one exists or existed, but it was disappeared. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. I think that it might have been more trouble than what it would have been worth to, you know, just think about all the people that had the newspaper delivered to them or, you know, the ones that had already bought them trying to track all those people down to get rid of them because there would have been at least one copy that survived. I don't know. All that seems really fishy and makes me really skeptical. Yeah. Although I was a little surprised that that guy lived to be so old in that day and age. Yeah. And um, from those um, weird sources, they were all saying that he would never call her like my late wife or my wife or whatever. He would always refer to her as the love of my life. Oh. Yeah. So he was really in love with her. You are the love of my life. You are the... But I mean, they were only married like two years. So it was before he... He had a chance to get tired of her or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Wait, how old was she again when she died? She was 20. Jesus. Oh, that's young. Yeah. Oh, okay. I could see that. It was a little bit of a 
unhealthy obsession with her. No. <laughs> well, I mean, he was a kid too. I think he was maybe like 25 or 30 or something. So, I mean, that was probably the only love he ever had, you know? Right. Man, crazy. Any other thoughts? No other thoughts. Well, special shout out to our super homie, super friends, Sophia, Natasha, and Eric. Boop, boop, boop. If you want to help support the show, get the episodes a week early and ad free. Get your name shouted out on the show and get some stickers from us a few times a year. Check us out at patreon.com slash technically a conversation or check the show notes. Best of all, it's only $2 a month. You can't even buy cigarettes or a coffin for that. <laughs> Definitely not a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Elena said coffin, we hope that you enjoy the show and you join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show, leave us a review, tell a friend, and subscribe wherever fine podcasts are sold. Yeah. Follow us on the socials at greetingstac, email us at greetingstac at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail at 915 317 6669. If you have a story about being buried alive to share with us. Oh my gosh, that would be terrible, but please <laughs> share that with us. <laughs> Imagine that shit. Imagine just waking up and realizing that you were buried alive. No, I, I already don't like tight spaces. I'm claustrophobic. On top of being afraid of heights, I'm also afraid of confined spaces. Oh, no, I, I would know. Mm -mm. So I guess I should have asked you, what are you not afraid of, Elena? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things I'm not afraid of. AI. <laughs> On next week's episode of Technically a Conversation. Some man had just made headlines for sailing around the world. One of Douglas's younger brothers said, well, if they can do it, why can't we? And Douglas's parents sold the farm and bought a yacht. And they said, yeah, we should be able to do it too. And they decided to take this journey, try to sail around the world, the whole family. They set off to sea January 27, 1971 from Almuth in Cornwall, UK. There was an extra passenger that they picked up along the way. His name was Robin Williams and he was a boat hitchhiker. 17 months after the family set sail, June 15th, around 10 p.m., they saw something black sticking up, turned out to be the fin of a killer whale. Then three bangs were heard and it was the crack of the boat. The dad demanded abandon ship, get the life raft launched. The ship went under in less than two minutes. New episodes drop Monday. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a show.